All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to make uh, the perfect redfish uh, rig. Um, this involves making your own leaders. Um, a lot of you may have differing opinions on how you think leaders should be made. Um, everybody has their own opinion. This is just mine. Um, I'm going to use some 80 pound monofilament line. Uh, some of you may uh, choose fluorocarbon, braids, what have you. They all have their merits and their weaknesses. Uh, for me, I found that an 80 pound uh, monofilament is probably about the right size. I mean, for some of you, you might want to go with a, uh, a lighter leader uh, if you're having trouble with the fish seeing them. Uh, I've had a lot of luck with the 80 pounder. You're going to need a good set of crimping pliers. Uh, these are made by Boone. Uh, they're very high quality stainless steel. Um, it's an appropriate tool for the job. Um, when you're using your crimping sleeves, you don't want to bother trying to use like pliers and stuff. It's just not going to work. So I've got a set of uh, Boone crimping pliers. You can pick a set of these up for about 30 bucks. You're going to need your crimping sleeves. I like to use the ones that are double eyelet. Uh, on these particular ones, of course, it's just a uh, 1.6 size sleeve. You can get these in packs of 100 for about 8 bucks. Some circle hooks. I like to use a number five for redfish because um, you can generally load them down with a pretty good bit of bait. Um, sometimes for redfish, I'll use two or three dead mullet um, or five or six, you know, little pinfish or whatever I can stuff on a hook just to make it look appetizing. Uh, so the number fives are a good choice for that purpose. Um, in terms of weight, you've got some options there. This is a two ounce uh, round lead sinker. I've got a three ounce lead sinker. You can get these all the way up to, I uh, believe, six ounce before they start getting into the round style. Um, a two or three ounce is probably going to do for most of your bay work. Uh, if you're fishing out in the surf, you might want to go with a, a V style weight like this one. This is also a three ounce, but what that'll do is it'll kind of dig down into the sand and uh, keep your bait in place on the bottom. This particular weight requires a different rigging um, strategy, which we're not going to cover here. But that's just to show you that that is available. For your swivel, uh, a size two power swivel, basically just a high quality swivel. You're going to use one uh, per liter. So let's go ahead and start. It's real simple. Once you get on a roll, um, you can knock a bunch of these out in a, in a hurry. Go ahead and uh, pull you out about that much line. That's probably about two feet, maybe two and a half tops. These little teeth right here on your cutters, Okay, that's for cutting your line, snipping off. Um, you can start at either end, it doesn't really matter, but go ahead and start the swivel in, just for show. Um, go ahead and grab a couple of these sleeves. And if you're doing a bunch, you can go ahead and just pour your components out on the table. Um, this is a good thing to do while you're uh, sitting around at fish camp or whatever. Go ahead and thread one through the sleeve. All right. You got one end of the line through the sleeve, through the swivel back through the sleeve. That's why it's a double sleeve because it's made to make a loop, okay, like that. Now, one thing you can do, you can actually thread it all the way through and leave you a lot of line and just kind of melt the end of it and it'll pull nice and tight and give you a nice flush fit without having to trim them. Uh, for my purposes, I don't really care. So just run about that much. You're gonna use the corresponding setting on your, well, it's not really setting, but the corresponding cut on your crimping tool. A lot of people will incorrectly crimp these things. They'll crimp it like that, thinking that the teeth actually have to gouge down inside of the, of the crimping sleeve. That's incorrect. You actually want the grooves, you want to kind of hold it apart, and you want the grooves to correspond with the round sections of the crimping pliers. Now you don't want to go all the way to the edge. You might be tempted to go all the way right there. But what you're going to do is you're going to crush it and it's going to cut your line or it's going to kink this mono. And when you get a big ass redfish on there, he's going to snap you off. So come to about right there, leaving yourself a pretty good bit of space. About right there, give it a squeeze. All right, you'll notice that it kind of blossoms out on the end. Um, that's completely normal. That's what you want. Go ahead and flip it around and come in from the other side and just give it a good little, little kink there. 
Again, not going all the way quite to the edge. About like that. All right. A proper crimp is going to look a little blossomed out like that on the edges, but that's perfect. That's about what you want. You can test it for strength. It's not going anywhere. Bend it over and then go ahead and cut off your excess. That's what this little slot is for. So you can stick, stick it in there, trim it off, and then you've got your swivel end. This you're just going to tie directly onto your line. That's the way I run it. Um, when you're in current and the bait is spinning or anything like that, you want a swivel to keep your line from twisting. That's what these are for. Now, this is where some people are going to um, probably get on to me. But what I like to do um, for a redfish leader now, this is for redfish or trout, go ahead and put on your two ounce weight, drop it down to the swivel like that, go about halfway down the length of the leader and just tie yourself a knot. There's probably some of you that are going, oh my god, you're tying a knot. Yeah, a knot can weaken the overall uh, structural integrity of the line, but I find that the less components you have in there, the better. And that knot, all it's going to do is just help keep the weight from sliding down the line. Um, in my mind, I mean, sure, you could put a single, a single barrel sleeve. I mean, yes, you could put a single barrel sleeve on there and just crimp it in place. But in my mind, what it does is it kind of weakens the line even more. So to me, a knot is a small price to pay. I'd rather do that than have to crimp something else in place. So just go ahead and pull it pretty tight. And then that's just going to keep your two ounce weight from sliding down. All right, then we're going to come down here. And that can be about halfway. I mean, you want it probably closer to the swivel than it is to the actual bait itself. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. Then we're going to come in and grab a hook. And of course, you know, this rig can be kind of changed around depending on what you guys want or what you need. I'll show you a trout one in a future video that I use especially for trout. So again, a crimping sleeve, circle hook. Now, a word on circle hooks. Uh, circle hooks are neat because they generally will hook a fish in the edge of the mouth. Um, for catch and release purposes, a circle hook is almost mandatory in some areas, uh, depending on the, spe uh, the fish species, I'm sorry. Um, this particular hook, I like them because if a redfish takes off, they will generally hook themselves, and that's the nice thing about circle hooks. I mean, you do have to set them to a degree, but ideally they usually hook themselves. All right, so same thing with the hook. Notice I'm leaving plenty of edge on the uh, end of the sleeve. Compress it. All right, and then we're going to bring it around to the other side and try the same thing. Not really going to go all the way to the edge, but just to give us a little bit more rigidity here. All right, that's a good one. That's exactly what you want. Trim off the excess. And at this point, this rig is pretty much ready to take fishing. It's a real basic crimping operation. I mean, you got your swivel, crimping sleeve, knot, holding your weight in place, and your circle hook. Uh, put your live bait on here, toss it out, and uh, that's generally it. These hold up real nice. Um, I've caught some big bull redfish on them. Um, some of them as long as like 36 to 40 inches. Um, so I know this rig works for redfish. So if you guys want a good redfish rig, there you go. Basic, simple. Now when it comes to bluefish, uh, sharks, or other um, fish with really aggressive teeth, We'll cover that in another video, but for now this is pretty much, uh, this particular rig can be used uh, pretty well for flounder, um, trout, depending on the situation, uh, redfish, uh, of course you're going to catch plenty of like stingrays, catfish, little sharks, stuff like that. Uh, one thing about mono that you want to do, you do want to inspect it from time to time. Um, they are disposable leaders to a degree, I mean you're going to snap them off, you're going to destroy them, and even fish that don't have really um, aggressive teeth, they still have teeth. And we're talking about saltwater use. So the, these uh, monofilament leaders, they will fray over time. Just inspect them. Make sure you don't get a kink or a cut that can cause you to lose a big fish. And uh, other than that, I mean, replace them when they're wore out. Um, 
and they generally last pretty good while. But uh, there you go. All right, so real quick, I'm going to make one of these leaders in real time without explaining it, uh, just to show you how quick you can do it. All right, just that quick. Uh, now master that on a bumpy boat in the middle of the ocean and you got it. Mm -hmm.